right, guys, that is the uh, the kind of the pseudo bitter, the kind of an English bitter, maybe bitter. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not an expert, <clears throat> and I'm not English, so yeah, that's what I got. Um, yeah. So that's that. My serving pressure a little bit high. Um, I had some issues with my um, with my regulator and the low tank volume and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I'm kind of getting everything dialed back into where it was. Still got that toffee, kind of caramel-y kind of smell. It's pretty good. It's actually pretty good. It's really 5.5%-ish. It's um, super easy to drink. All right, guys. Uh, Tuesday night, I mean, tomorrow is horror wheezy. Wheezy. Ow! Look what I got. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Let's, uh, let's go sit down and we'll talk about a few things. All right, guys. Uh, cheers. Um, so I brewed Saturday morning. Um, I re-brewed my SJ Poor entry. Um, just in case, just in case I'm moving on. Um, so what I've got all of my reviews done. My uh, results are emailed in. Video, just one video, six reviews on one video. It is uploaded to YouTube. It is private, so no one can see it until I make it public. So, um, let's see, all the reviews, results are due in, well, the results are due in next, let's see, the 22nd. So, is that next Thursday, Friday time period, I think is what it is. Um, so, there's no time between when the results come out and uh, the packages need to be shipped to the hubs to rebrew, unless you can get a beer brewed, packaged, and shipped in like to a week and a half time frame. It's not much, not much time at all. So I've got that sitting in there. <clears throat> I've got the double IPA um, in there with it. It's just hanging out at 65. Um, I raised the temperature on it to 70. It finished about 10:14, so that puts it right about. 7.6 percent depending on um what what um what you want to use now if you go to like um was a brewer's friend they've got two different ways to, to do it you use the same the same calculator there's one toggle you can use two different two different uh, methods right one method puts it at like seven six one another method puts it at eight percent so it's it's a dip up and it's there and it is bitter af um it's been a while since i've had a beer that's um, been real kind of West Coast kind of bitter, um, dank. That definitely uh, fits the bill for that. Um, so all that's done, um, ready to go. I just got to, this beer will ferment out. It should be done fermenting probably this weekend. Um, so then I'll proceed on with the fermentation and adjunct addition schedule per uh uh, my first beer. Um, so yeah, I hit all my numbers. Uh, the numbers were almost identical. They were within a point of each other uh, as far as uh, pH, um, pre-boil, and uh, post-boil gravity. So everything was everything was good. <laughs> Hoping everything goes well. Um, so yeah, let's talk about my keyser now. My keyser and my when my tank gets really low, the 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 pressure gets real wonky. So, what I did, <clears throat> I knew my pressure was low. We'll back up. I knew my pressure was low. Um, I overcarbed the IPL. So what I did is the 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 trick when you take you hook up the CO two line to the beer out line and burp out that way. Well, it burped, 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 and I heard this trickling sound. And well, I guess I'm going to take it as there wasn't enough pressure, constant pressure from the tank <clears throat> to keep the beer in the keg, and my valves don't have check balls in them, so there's beer actively being pumped into the the manifold. Um, luckily, I stopped it before it got pumped into my regulator. Um, so that happened a couple weeks ago. I didn't mention that last week. I totally forgot about it. Um, so, um, that day I shut everything down, um, pulled, pulled my quick disconnects off the manifold lines, uh, soaked everything in, um, in like PBW 
soaked it for a few hours, then rinsed the bejesus out of it, then let it air dry. Um, so everything's clean, everything's good. Uh, none of the valves are sticky. So I think I got everything out. Um, so, but since then, I've been kind of, I, I hooked up the regulator and immediately it's, it's bounced up to like 20 PSI or whatever. So I backed it down. Um, and unbeknownst to me, I turned the damn uh, CO2 off uh, from the regulator. So my two kegs that I've got in there now were running strictly off of uh, CO2 that was in at, you know, it was degassing from the beer. So I I fixed my overcard problem. Knowledge right there, right? Don't do it that way. Um, so yeah, I turned the I turned the uh, I found I finally backtracked and I noticed that I had the uh, CO2 turned off. So I turned it back on, and um, so I've been dialing down the pressure a little bit because you know, it's a little bit too much serving pressure um so it gives you quite a bit of, bit of head there so that, that that's another thing just because you don't have a good head on your beer doesn't mean it's properly carbonated and there's a lot of things that go into a head on a beer uh if you if you pour very gingerly you're not going to get a head on a beer you can take a, an under carbonated beer pour aggressively and get a nice head on it and still be under carbonated so a lot of the carbonation all of the head that you see from these beer reviews it, it's, it's it's a combination of a lot of things but don't get discouraged, young man. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I got all that figured out. Um, so, basically, that's it, guys. I don't have any footage of my uh, rebrew. Um, you know, that's it. Uh, hit my numbers. Um, really don't have anything to talk about. Um, I think one... I'm going to have a full lineup of taps here pretty soon. Um, see, my SJ Pour Beer... Once it's terminal, um, I'll add in the adjunct. Then I'll probably cold crash. <clears throat> and I'll cold crash for a certain number of days. I've got this days down. Um, so I'll keg that. Then I'll probably go ahead. And, and once I start to cold crash for my SJ Pour Beer, I'll go ahead and dry hop the DIPA cold crash at the same time. I'll go ahead and keg the SJ Pour Beer and let the other one continue to cold crash um, so that I can keg that at my leisure. Um, that's the plan, uh, but I'm, I'm kind of excited. I got a beer I want to I want to brew. Um, a lot of chatter uh, with the just the messenger groups and stuff that I'm in um, about just doing real traditional lager. So I'm going I'm to do a real traditional Pilsner. Pilsner. All Pilsner malt. I may put a little bit of I got some other adjunct, I mean, some other uh, specialty malts over there. I might do that, but more or less, it's probably going to be 100% pills or malt and all saws hops. Um, I'm going to ferment it out with uh, WLP 800. Um, I'll probably still do the the um, the um, brewlosophy quick logger technique in. Get it in, get it out. About three weeks or so. But yeah, I'm pretty excited. I, I've got now. This is this is the story now. And there's guys on on the YouTube's talking about doing that stuff. And I was like, yeah, it sounds pretty good. I mean, it's interesting to me. I brewed loggers before, um, mostly recently within the last year and change. It's always been the IPL, right? Just because it's a good beer, it's an easy drinker. Um, so I got some beers delivered from a local brewery and. Um, a four pack of uh, their pilsner was in there, and then this guy that that he's the owner, uh, head brewer, um, he studied brewing in, jo in uh, Germany for ten years, so he really enjoys um, doing traditional German beers. And I had I had the pilsner, and I was like, man, this is this is really really good. It's super enjoyable, crushable, five and a half percent. It's just yeah. So I figured at that point I'm gonna do it. So I've got the stuff coming. Um, Evidently, a lot of um, homebrew supply shops are having a lot of trouble getting White Lab stuff in. Um, so um, I got a pound of, of saws. I don't need a pound of saws. But I got a pound of saws from Label Peelers, and they're from northern Ohio. Um, they're at 16 ounces, was not too much more than, than 8 ounces um, from other places. So I went ahead and I bit the bullet, um, ordered the the yeast and the hops. So then I get a phone call from those guys, which I've never gotten a phone call from anybody. Um, 
other than Bobby from New Jersey did call me once <clears throat> because when I was working on these dip tubes for, for that, I kind of, I wanted something a little bit special and, um, some stuff got crossed up in translation. But anyway, he called me a super nice guy. But anyway, the guys from Label Peelers called me and they said, well, we, we're having trouble. Um, the yeast is supposed to be in this week. It never came in. Uh, White Labs is telling us it's going to be next week, but they've said that now for two weeks. And, I, and they gave me the option of just shipping the hops, canceling the yeast, canceling the whole entire order, or just waiting. So I said, you know, I've got, I've got plenty enough going on. Um, I, I'm not in any, any hurry. So hopefully I'll get all that stuff in this week. I don't need it. I'm not brewing it anytime soon. It'll probably be probably another two or three weeks because um, the way I've been hitting the, the IPL in in this beer here, those those kegs won't be around, around uh, much longer. So anyway, that's that's kind of it for me. Um, yeah, so yeah, fucking high. If you guys are in Cincinnati, and you guys are in like in the Kenwood Silverton area, um, high grain is they've got they've got their pills in their game down. Um, yeah, and once all this COVID stuff's done and over with, and they reopen their kitchen, their food is on point too. So anyway, if you guys are in Cincinnati, high grain, we've got their pills in their game down. All right, guys, um, that's it for me. I will talk to you guys next week. All right, cheers, peace out.